The beer du jour is Mount Joy Double X Oatmeal Stout, Irish Oatmeal Stout from Stone Angel Brewing, which turns out to be the closest brewery to my house. How convenient. Oh, that's interesting. From the Middle Ages onwards, due to the difficulty in growing barley in a wet climate, the Irish use more oatmeal in their beers than the English. Neat. Anyway, now that we've got the beer our beer figured out, um, let's see what's in all these awesome little packages. It is, after all, Mailbag Monday. So this one says Expansion Board Module and Development Board Module and Module. It is three, three, three things in one. What do we have? Is that everything? Okay. What is that? That looks like some kind of an ESP8266. It is, in fact, an ESP8266. Um, what do we have going on here? Does it say specifically which one it is? ESP8266 module. Um, 802.11, yeah, plus 25. Huh. It doesn't specifically say. ESP8266 ESP12 E serial port wireless Wi-Fi transceiver board module. AP plus STA. Whatever that means. From Good Module. Somebody I've ordered from many times in the past with good results. Happy with these guys. Um, current price $2.06 with $0.85 cents shipping. Priced in Canadian funds. How nice of them. Um, that's when I bought it. It was uh, $2.50 Canadian with free shipping. And yeah, this is the ESP model tw or the Dash 12 version. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, versions of the chip. This is, I think, one of the more versatile ones. A good balance of output power and uh, connectivity, built-in antenna, all that good stuff. Anyway, uh, so 2.4 gigahertz, which is, you know, uh, Wi-Fi, basic Wi-Fi. Um, 802.11 BGN, and various different Wi-Fi um, protocols. The power amplifier on it is plus 25 dBm, which is more than a watt, I believe. Anyway, the important warning here, 3.3 volt supply and logic. Not 5 volt tolerant. If you connect it to 5 volts on an Arduino, you will destroy it. You need a logic converter, which is why I have several of them in a drawer just over there somewhere. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's... Uh, about 300 milliamps, so you got to give it a fair bit of juice to uh, do its magic. That was a good choice. Uh, what else did we get from Good Module? Looks like there's five of those and one of these. Let's see what this guy is. It looks familiar. It's got a bunch of header pins, males and females. That is a Wemos D1 Mini, or at least a clone of it. Um, so what do we have here? So we have, yeah, right there, same module. Oh, not quite. Slightly different uh, shape of antenna. Other than that, it's the same one. But the D1 Mini basically breaks it out to breadboard friendly pins, adds a reset button, um, and adds a USB port. And a, what is that, CH340? Yes, it is a CH340, which is a USB to serial converter. So we can program it through there. So let's see what happens if we throw some power onto it. Oh, there is a, that is an LED, okay. So that's a little blue LED there. And nothing's an LED on the back. Blink, no, nothing happens. Press the reset button. Yeah, so that's the only LED on the thing. Okay, I haven't played with uh, the D1 Mini actually. I think this is the first one that I've got. I've got a full-size one, which is uh oh, why isn't that coming out? There we go. Um, what was this thing? Oh yeah, I've got a full one of these, which is the size of an Arduino Uno. Yeah, this one here, and it breaks out the pins all the same as the D1 Mini. Again, see, the same chip, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm getting a surprising amount of uh, ESP8266s. 
And that's also what's in here. Just basically one of these guys on a baseboard module. Um, this is the one that most of the people who did that pro that same project used, uh, the D1 Mini, just because it's convenient for programming. I had to dick around a little bit with programming jumpers. But that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. Oh, and about this thing. Um, I've heard rumors that YouTube is changing how data is presented to third-party APIs, including, I think, this one. I don't know, Brian, uh, if you're if you're watching, uh, maybe chime in in the comments if you're aware of anything, since that was your uh, your library that's uh, that's doing the magic here. But I think YouTube is going to break how this works sometime in the future in August. I don't know. Stay tuned. We'll see. So, also from Good Module, Node MCU Lua ESP8266 ESP-12 Wemos D1 Mini Wi-Fi CH340G Development Board Antenna. Yeah, currently going for 389 Canadian. I paid 369 with free shipping and still free shipping. Good, good. Oh, so it looks like they had a different version that had a, an external antenna, but that's not the one I ordered. That's the more expensive one. Um, so 11 digital I.O., plus one analog I.O., which is exactly what the ESP-12 does. Um, 3.3 volts, yeah. Um, all pins can be interrupted for PWM. All this is exactly the same as just what the ESP-8266-12 uh, can do. Okay, let's see what these other guys are. And there's five of them all the same, so... That looks like a boost or buck or something like that yeah i'm gonna say that's uh probably an adjustable either booster buck regulator um an adjustment there and an inductor there a chip controlling everything there and very little information on the back except for an in and an out and also from good module in the same package we have one slash two slash five slash ten pieces mini three amp dc to dc converter step down buck power supply based on the MP2307 chip. Five of them for 289 Canadian. Input voltage between 4.75 and 23 volts. Output voltage anywhere from 1 to 17. Adjustable. Nice. Rated... Ah, you cheesy bastards. Rated 1.8 amps, or 3, or 3 amps peak, but it cannot be prolonged. 96% is the maximum efficiency. Switching frequency 340 kilohertz. So I could probably use this for an audio device too, because that's way out of the hearing range. Yeah, 30 millivolts ripple. Yeah, that's a little bit much, but whatever. Um, plus or minus 2.5% regulation. Close enough, I guess. No short circuit protection, no reverse voltage protection. Super mini board. Well, that's already a pretty good mailbag. Let's see what we've got next. Oh, three times DC buck step down regulator converter. Gee, I wonder what's in there. Could it be? Could it be? Wow, those are similar to the one we just looked at, only a little bit bigger. Are they even the same chip? Yeah, actually they are, the 2307. Okay, so we know what this is, just in a slightly larger form factor. See how much I paid for those ones. DC DC buck step down regulator converter 4.2 to 23 volts to 3 3.559 Right. Um this one came from Elec module 58. I paid 297 for the three of them. They are currently selling for 99 cents each, which would be uh the same. Okay. And free shipping. Nice. Interesting that so many of these guys are listing their stuff in Canadian dollars. Usually it shows both the American and the Canadian. Okay, next in is one times modules. That's more than one. And there are different sort of modules. What are these? Are these... Oh! Oh, I remember. I think these are little laser diode modules. Ah, those should be fun. Let's uh, go check the listing, see what voltage they need, and then we shall play. Of course. Ten pieces, mini, 650 nanometer, 6 millimeter, 3 volt, 5 milliwatt, laser dot, diode module, red copper head 
Hot from DIY Electronic. Another one that I've bought a bunch of stuff from in the past. Uh, $2.15 Canadian, buck sixty-four American for the 10 of them, and free shipping, of course. For 5 milliwatts, 650 nanometers. 650 nanometers is the wavelength of the light, a.k.a. the color of it, which I think is kind of reddish, if I remember correctly. 650 nanometers. Yes, it is, in fact, red. Okay. 6 millimeters, 3 volts, less than 40 milliamps, makes a dot, good between minus 10 Celsius and plus 40. Okay, so I can't use them outside in the winter, but other than that, they're good. Okay, so let's see if we can light this thing up. So i got 3 volts here. Turn it on. Oh, it's a dot. Why did it stop making a dot? Did I blow it up already? What the hell happened? Oh, duh. Jankiness. There we go. It's a laser. Laser pointer. Interesting. Uh, where's something white? That'll do. Is that what you would uh, describe as a red? It's not the most focused dot in the world. Especially when you get a little bit of distance. But that's not bad. You can definitely hit a uh, photo detector of some sort with that and tell if there's a beam break. You remember way, way back I made a uh, uh, detector for uh, train cars on a hidden track of my model railroad. I could use something like that just to shine across the track at a photodiode or some sort of a photo sensor. Hmm. Or I could make some kind of a light show with that and several other, so, hmm. I wonder what that looks like in a dark room. That'd probably be good. Actually, that's not bad even in a bright room though, is it? Laser beer. What is next? Uh, description of contents, de decorative tools. It's squishy. Hmm. I'm gonna need a sharp blade on that thing pretty soon. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I was, uh, I was on a magic kick looking for cheap magic props on eBay and I found this bag of sponge balls. Magicians tend to use these things for, for various illusions because you can squish them down really tiny and hide them in your hand. They're not super well made. I think you can even see that one without being zoomed in, but yeah, that one's kind of janky. One thing that's probably important about these things, if you're actually going to use them for a performance for anything, except for really little kids is that they all look the same so that people can't tell one from the other one. So that one's probably not that good. I mean, the classic trick, as you, as you moving them from one hand to another, um, the, the spectator ends up with them in their hand and they think they've only got one. And then you do that and a whole bunch of them pop out, but you can't really tell. They do squish down really nicely though. That's cool. Eight pieces, 4.5 centimeter soft red sponge ball, close up magic street fashion comedy trick. Not sure about the fashion part from lovely dash mall, just a random seller. Currently selling for a dollar twenty-three Canadian. I paid a dollar nineteen, um, which is usually ninety-nine cents American. So there's no description of how to do any of the tricks with them, but uh, there that's fine because that's magician secrets, you know. And the last thing is LED module. Seems like a thing I might actually order, except it isn't an LED module. It is a DigiSpark, AKA the AT Tiny 85, which uh, I've, I've talked about these before. And actually that is what's running this part of the sign, the top part here. Um, not this form factor, slightly different form factor, but the same software. And I could run it off one of these. This one as, as we've seen before, 
it's designed to just plug straight into a USB port. And if I'm correct, this one may in fact have the blink sketch on it from the factory. Now, one thing about these DigiSparks, oh, it doesn't. One thing about the DigiSparks is there's about a five second, uh, um, DUA when you plug them in and power them on so that uh, the bootloader can see if you're ready to upload stuff to it or not. Um, so that's, uh, that's part of what's going on, but there's not much on these little boards and it doesn't take that much to run, run the ATtiny85. All there is on here is in fact the ATtiny85, a couple of resistors, a diode, and the biggest component on there is a 7805 uh, regulator so that you can use an arbitrary input voltage and run this thing off five volts. Now this guy has USB capability. It's kind of done through a bit of a fudge in the software. It doesn't need a Wii, but the bootloader has that built into it, um, which takes up two of the pins. So you got two pins for power, two pins for USB, leaves four pins left for random stuff if you need the USB to be active during your sketch. Or you can use actually all six, well, five, yeah, six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six for various things. I think three of them have PWM on them. One of them can be analog, I think. They're, it's a pretty versatile little chip and cheap too. And in this form factor, really easy to use. DigiSpark Kickstarter ATtiny85 Arduino General Micro USB Development Board. I wanted an auction for two dollars and ten cents Canadian, or a buck sixty, um, way back in January, from this guy whose name I can't pronounce. Um, but I'm not going to put a link to this closed auction, obviously, because that doesn't help you. I'm going to put a link to just a search term for these things. They're all over the place and they're cheap. As I said, uh, here's basically what's uh, what's going on. It's pretty much the same thing. It's got 8K of flash or 6K with the bootloader on it. It's got I2C and or SPI, uh, three pin. Oh, it's got three pins of, uh, of PWM or more with uh, software PWM. It's got an analog to digital converter on four of the pins. Wow, I, I'd forgotten about that. Um, you can use six pins if the USB is being used or all eight. And there is all of this week's Mailbag Monday items. A fun little assortment as usual. So the D1 Mini, the ESP, and these little regulators took five weeks to get here. The Bag O Lasers took one month. The DigiSpark took five and a half weeks. These three slightly larger regulators took five weeks. And these sponge balls <laughs> took 14 days. The winner! Now, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with these, though I don't really have an audience for for doing cheap magic tricks. I used to, a long time ago, several years ago, used to be a scout leader and cub scout leader, and I'd occasionally throw a cheesy little magic trick at the kids just to amuse and amaze them and surprise them with, uh, with things that they didn't expect. But I retired from that a while ago, so I don't really have an audience. Still, they're fun, and they were like a buck. Why not? Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, thanks to my Patreon supporters for uh, helping me finance this silliness. I really do appreciate it. And I noticed I got an, a new one, a new uh, supporter just after the last mailbag. So thank you for that. Um, thanks to the rest of you, everybody, for watching. I really do appreciate that. And comments, questions, etc, etc, down at the bottom. And thanks to Stone Angel Brewing for making such a cool beer. I like it. Bye everybody. Talk to you later.